Hi everyone, it's Aiden here with eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Swagman XC2 bike rack on our 2015 Dodge Journey. That's is going to be a pretty solid bike rack and a good way of getting two bikes on the back of your vehicle. Right away I want to talk about how this is a frame mounted bike rack so you're going to want to avoid carbon frames and you may have some issues with alternative frame bikes because of the way it attaches. With those alternative frames you can fix that pro problem with a bike adapter bar which will just go across here and give an attachment point for this hook. So let's go ahead and take a look at that hook. You're just going to come in here to this gray button right here. We'll just press that and it will release the hook. And then to bring it down, we just ratchet it down. It'll lock in place and push the bike into these wheel hoops down here, giving it a really solid hold. A lot more bike racks have kind of some shake and play in them, even with anti-rattle bolts. But this one overall, there's no shifting in the bike in the bike rack. It's all pretty solid in the hitch. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Another point of adjustment you have is down here with the wheel hoops. You'll notice that you have these hand knobs here and those you can loosen up here and slide back and forth to accommodate a wide variety of different wheel bases. So that's really good for your kids bikes and your adult bikes. So you can have your adult bike up here and your kids bike in the back. But let's go ahead and remove the bike and actually see some more about this bike rack. So all you got to do to get that unloaded is just release the hook like we did before and I'm going to actually bring these up quite a bit, grab the bike and just bring it around the rack here. Careful to avoid the vehicle and not bump into it. I'll set this over to the side. Now unloading and loading is one slight disadvantage that this bike rack has. That center mast is something that's kind of be in the way when you're loading and unloading, but it's not that bad. This bike rack only has a 35 pound weight capacity, so you're not going to be loading up heavy e-bikes or anything like that. So most of the time it's going to be pretty easy to load and unload. Now this bike rack also doesn't have a tilting feature, so if we want to get back access to our vehicle, we're going to have to lower this center mast down. And the way that we're going to do that is come down here to where it says Swagman. We've got this little pull pin here. So we'll just pull that out and we can lower that center mass down and lock it back in place with that same pin. This will give us access to the back of our vehicle here, but just keep in mind, you can't do that with your bikes loaded. I'm gonna go ahead and raise the mass back into place here. And we can go ahead and get some measurements real quick. I'm just gonna grab my tape measure. Now right away, we wanna see how much is gonna to add to the back of the vehicle. So from the back of bumper here on our Dodge Journey, we're gonna be adding about 20 inches to the back of the vehicle there at this outmost point with the wheel hoop. And then at the closest point, which is probably just gonna be one of these inner wheel hoops, we've got seven and a quarter inches. So again, that's plenty of space, enough room to get a bike in there with the handlebars. You shouldn't have any clearance issues there. With our ground clearance, we do have a bit of a rise in the shank of the bike rack here, so it does help us out quite a bit. And to the bottom point right here, we're gonna be right at 16 inches of ground clearance, which is more than enough for most applications. Now, this can't fold up against your vehicle to save some of that space at the back, but one unique thing about this rack is that these side arms fold up. Now this is gonna be more used for when you're at home, storage in the garage, because these bike racks can get pretty big and bulky and hard to store. So whenever we do this, we can take up a lot of that space. It's a lot easier to tuck this whole apparatus against a wall somewhere and make it way easier to store. So I like that feature a lot. Down here at the hitch, we can take a closer look at how it attaches. So you'll see we have an inch and a quarter shank, but an adapter right here that's included to use in two inch hitches. So you can use it in your two inch hitch or a class two inch and a quarter hitch. This isn't rated for class one hitches, so keep that in mind. We have that anti-rattle bolt like I mentioned before. It isn't locking, but it does a great job of keeping that rack stable in the vehicle. So I'd maybe just look into 
one of the locking anti-rattle bolts that Swagman does offer and their cable lock systems that they offer too. Aside from all that though, I think it's going to be a really great quality bike rack. It's going to be a great addition to your journey. Thanks for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.